This is gonna be a classic do a hard integral video. And here we're gonna look at the integral from zero to infinity of x minus one over the square root of two to the x minus one times the natural log of the same thing, two to the x minus one dx. Okay, and the fact that we've got this two to the x minus one in two places in the integrand, that really gives us some major motivation that maybe we could start with that sort of substitution. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So let's set y equal to two to the x minus one. But now notice that that tells us that dy is equal to the natural log of two times two to the x uh, dx. So that's using a standard rule for derivatives of the exponential functions where the base is not equal to the natural base e. So let's see if we can do a little more with this. Notice that our original substitution is equivalent to saying that y plus one equals two to the x. And that's pretty helpful because we see two to the x inside of this equation that involves dy and dx. So let's rewrite that real quick. So we have dy is equal to the natural log of two. Now we can write this as y plus one times dx. That allows us to write our differential component with respect to x in terms of only the variable y, which is good news. So here we've got dx is equal to one over the natural log of two times one over y plus one dy. So let's put a box around that. And that's what we're gonna use up here in our substitution for dx. Okay, so let's see where we are at this moment. So we've got this is equal to the integral of, well, let's take care of the numerator in just a second. But we've got the square root of y for this term right here. Next, we have the natural log of y for this term right here. And then the dx component is gonna give us a y plus one in the denominator, a dy up here, and then a one over the natural log of two, which I'll bring out to the front since we know that that's a constant and we've got the constant multiple rule for definite integrals. Okay, another thing that we can do is change the bounds of integration. So notice when x equals zero, y is equal to two to the zero minus one, which is also equal to zero. And furthermore, as x approaches infinity, y also approaches infinity. So we've got our same bounds of integration. Next, we'll take this equation right here and see what we can do to solve for x. So first off, I'll take the log of both sides. So that'll give me the natural log of y plus one on the left-hand side. So I'll bring a purple star down here to say that's a continuation there. And then the log of two to the x is gonna be x times natural log of two. Again, that's from a standard logarithm rule. So next, we can divide both sides by natural log of two, and that gives us x equals one over natural log of two times natural log of y plus one, like this. But that tells us that x minus one can be rewritten as follows. This is natural log of y plus one minus natural log of two all over the natural log of two. Okay, so that gives us an extra natural log of two in the denominator, so I'll denote that like as follows. And then our numerator becomes this natural log of y plus one minus natural log of two. So let's write that down, natural log of y plus one minus natural log of two. Okay, great. So we've made our first substitution. So next, we wanna look at this and see that we have y inside of a square root. But since y is inside of a square root, maybe we can simplify that by making another substitution. So let's make another substitution. Maybe we'll put it over here. It's a little bit smaller, so we don't have to worry about it as much. And that will be y equals t squared. But notice if y is equal to t squared, that means that dy is equal to 2t dt. But that tells us that dy is equal to two times the square root of y dt. And that's good because we can use this equation to substitute out for our dy component. 
the bounds of integration stay the same because zero squared is zero and t squared will approach infinity as y approaches infinity. Okay, so let's see what we get now. So this is gonna be one over natural log of two squared. Again, the integral from zero to infinity. This becomes the natural log of t squared plus one minus the natural log of two all over, so this is gonna be the square root of t squared, which is just t because we're in the non-negative real numbers. And then I'm gonna write this as t squared plus one. I'll change the order of these two things. And then we have the natural log of t squared finally right there. Okay, so that takes care of everything except for the dy component. So for our dy component, we have 2t dt. So I'll write t dt here, and then I'll bring my 2 out because it's a constant. And notice I have some nice simplification here. This t right here is going to cancel this t right here. So that gives me something a little bit easier to work with. Next, we want to look at this and notice that something goes wrong when t is equal to 1. When t is equal to 1, we have the natural log of 1, which is 0 in the denominator. So that gives us some motivation to split this up into two integrals. And so we'll do just that. 2 over natural log of 2 quantity squared. This is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of t squared plus 1 minus natural log of 2 all over natural log of t squared times t squared plus 1. So I'll put it in that order now. And we have dt. So if I split off the integral from 0 to 1, then that means I'm left with the integral from 1 to infinity. So we have the integral from 1 to infinity of the same stuff. So now I'm gonna do a substitution on both of these integrals. This first integral, I'm gonna use the very trivial substitution t is just equal to u. So that just changes all of the t's to u's and doesn't really do anything else. But I do that so that I can do the same kind of substitution in the other integral using the same variable so they mesh together a little bit better. So here I'll make the substitution t equals one over u, which tells me that dt is equal to minus one over u squared du. Okay, now let's start talking about the bounds of integration for this substitution. So when t is equal to one, u is gonna be equal to one as well. So I'll maybe write this in orange for my new u bound of integration. And then when t approaches infinity, u is going to approach zero from above. So I'll just write that in orange as my new u bound of integration. So let's bring this stuff down. So this gives me two over natural log of two squared. We have the integral from zero to one of the natural log of u squared plus one minus natural log of two all over natural log of u squared times u squared plus one du. So that's just that first really, really straightforward change of variables. Now next we'll have plus the integral. Let's talk about the bounds of integration. So we'll pick up a minus sign from switching this to the integral from zero to one but we'll cancel that minus sign with this minus sign. So that leaves us a plus, the integral from zero to one of, now let's see, our numerator is now the natural log of one over u squared plus one minus the natural log of two all over, my denominator is now the natural log of one over u squared times one over u squared plus one. And then we have our dt component, which gives me a u squared in the denominator du. We've already taken care of the minus sign. So our goal integral is now the sum of these two integrals. Let's bring that up. So we brought our result from the last board to the top, and now we're ready to recombine these integrals, which we can do because they are over the same bounds of integration. But before we do that, Maybe we want to do some logarithm rules and other types of simpl simplification over on that right-hand side. So notice that natural log of 1 over anything is the same thing as minus the natural log of whatever that is. So that means I can take this 1 over u squared and replace it with a u squared if I pick up a minus sign right there. 
that's helpful because we have got natural log of u squared over there in the denominator. Okay, so another thing that we can do is take this u squared and multiply it through, and that gives us u squared plus one inside of those parentheses. But now the two denominators are exactly the same. And furthermore, we have a minus natural log of two over here, and then minus a negative natural log of two over here, so those are gonna cancel. That will leave us with two over natural log of two quantity squared. Now we have combined this into a single integral from zero to one of natural log of u squared plus one minus natural log of, well, let's maybe give this a common denominator. So one over u squared plus one can be rewritten as u squared plus one over u squared like that. And then in the denominator, we have natural log of u squared times u squared plus one du. Now next, we can maybe combine these two logarithms in the numerator using a natural log rule and that's going to combine using the difference into a quotient rule as the natural log of u squared plus one times u squared over u squared plus one, like that. But check it out, a lot of stuff cancels now. This u squared plus one is going to cancel with the, this u squared plus one. And then finally, this natural log of u squared is gonna cancel with this natural log of u squared. So we're left with a fairly simple integral. We have two over natural log of two squared times the integral from zero to one of, our numerator has totally canceled, so we have one over u squared plus one. That's the only thing that's left in the denominator. Now that has a fairly simple antiderivative. We have that this is two over natural log of two squared, the arctan of u evaluated from zero to one. And then we'll use the standard fact that arctan of one is pi over four and arctan of zero is zero to leave us with a final solution of pi over two times natural log of two quantity squared. Now I'm gonna rewrite that a little bit, although that's a fine place to stop. This is gonna be pi over two times natural log of two times natural log of two. But I'm gonna take this two and bring it inside to the exponent of that. And so in fact, we have pi over natural log of two times natural log of four. And for some reason, that seems like a little more aesthetically pleasing to me. And that's a good place to stop.